So this guy is this multimillionaire who is spending two million a year, apparently, to live forever. Now, as a longevity doctor, I've been in this space for a, a, a long time. I actually have a backdoor view into his protocol. I've been following his protocol for a few years, um, just because his the main physician, the main doctor that is designing his protocol is a, actually a, a friend and collaborator of mine. He's based here in Cambridge. And he's been sharing his protocol with me as it evolved over the last few years. So I have a, I have a bit of a backdoor view into this. But for those who don't know, let's kind of summarize the the story. So uh, Brian Johnson is a multimillionaire. He's the founder of Braintree. Uh, is he a billionaire? Maybe. Um, he exited to PayPal. He's the founder of uh, Kernel, which is uh, another cool company. So his premise is that what if I take my emotions out of my health altogether and just follow what the data says when it comes to his general health and well-being? Um, he wants to live as long as possible. And the way he's doing that, he, he's gathering as much data as possible about his body. Uh, this includes metrics that quantify the function and biological age of every single organ in his body. And we have more than 80 organs in the body. And so the idea is to quantify every single organ's age and then try to optimize that age. So uh, he has a team of researchers researching how to optimize these metrics and make them similar to an 18-year-old. 18, 18 uh, in many cases, he has his 17 or 18-year-old son as a comparison. So he's trying to reverse his metrics to be similar to his 18-year-old. And he's achieved that in a few metrics, which is interesting. But th what this ultimately has led to is that he follows a very strict diet and he actually does calorie restriction. Um, calorie restriction is, is probably one of the interventions that has showed the biggest impact on health, on longevity in mice and also in primates, some interesting uh, human data. Uh, so he follows a very strict calorie restriction diet. And what that means is he, he goes, I think, 20% under the um, recommended uh, daily requirements for medical guidelines. So he goes like 20% under, which is quite interesting. But what he does is he, he measures his uh, metrics and bloods um, regularly to make sure that he's not malnourished. Other than diet, obviously, he does a lot of uh, exercises and focusing on different verticals of health. He does more than 100 supplements every day. Uh, and he does all of these, all, all kinds of different um, interventions to improve himself. So wait, I don't know what to make of this. I think he's clearly an excellent marketer. I've watched a lot of his videos. He seems super smart, super driven. I like his mission. Um, but from your perspective, what's kind of BS in all of this? What's legit? Like what's the 99%? What's the, the Pareto principle stuff? Because um, 100 <laughs> supplements sounds pretty yeah, crazy. Pretty intense. I mean... He basically says that this is an experiment, right? And he's he, he's aware that a lot of this is just experimentation. Um, I like the idea that he's taking kind of his emotions out of it and just following what the data says. Uh, his team, which I know and I've worked with and I continue to work with on different uh, projects, is very much evidence-based. So they they understand the, the value of following uh, evidence-based medicine. But the thing is... Evidence-based medicine can also apply to N equal one experiments. So if you're doing an experiment on yourself um, and you sh you show an improvement in metrics following a certain regime, then that's also a, 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 you know interesting evidence. I think in his marketing, he does uh, rely too much on epigenetic age clocks um, and like the rate of age he calls it, and he he, he actually he, he claims to have the world record in reduction in uh, epigenetic age, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, and I think they know that it doesn't really mean anything, but it's it's. I think they use it for marketing because that's not the only metric he measures. He me measures proper functional metrics, like for every, from everything, everything from uh, you know the standard metabolic health, heart health, uh, even like VO two max, all of these metrics, um, which are more meaningful than epigenetic age. Wait a minute, what's a, what's an epigenetic clock, and why is it, why is it BS? Well. It's not that it's BS. Basically, the, these epigenetic clocks measure um, the methylation pattern, which is the, these chemical patterns that, are, that occur on our DNA uh, with age, and they correlate well to chronological age. So scientists can measure your epigenetic age and uh, kind of predict how long you have to live and uh, what your, your biological age is from these tests. The problem is that 
we don't know if improving these metrics actually correlates to any real health outcomes that people care about. So if I lower my biological age from, uh, you know, 40 to 30, does that actually mean anything or am I just lowering uh, a number? Uh, there's no evidence to show that these epigenetic clocks actually correlate to any meaningful um, clinical outcomes. That's why I, in, in my practice and in my uh, protocols with people, I don't really, th these are nice to have. I, if people ask for them, I would look at them, but uh, I would usually go for uh, hard clinical and functional tests to measure biological age. What I wonder with him is that clearly he's a really rich dude. Um, he's living his life. Why is he publicizing this so much? Like, what's the shtick with... Because presumably he's not going to be selling an ebook on Gumtree and trying to make a few thousand quid. Like, there's... I don't really understand his motives, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to psychoanalyze too much, but from listening to him and, and following his journey, um, I wonder if there might be uh, some, like, uh, OCD element here. Look, I don't know, uh, but I'm... I hope not, right? I hope that there's no, like, you know, psychological issues going on that are making him uh, kind of be so meticulous about his health. Um, and I hope this is a, a self-aware experiment. It seems to be that. He seems to be a bright guy and he's just following this uh, uh, rigid experiment and he's sharing the results with the world to hopefully help other people follow those that work for them. I'm all for that. But, yeah, I hope there's no kind of psychological or like may, maybe... Um, harmful psychological underpinnings so i think the interesting bit here from when we were talking before is um you've got like a version of this regime which is maybe uh slightly cheaper slightly less meticulous but we'll probably get 99 percent of the results do you want to maybe do you want to talk through maybe like the differences between what you might recommend to the ordinary person versus brian johnson's um, I, I guess you... look if we if we imagine brian johnson being like you know doing everything he can uh, uh, possible spending two million dollars a, uh, a year having a, a team of i think he said he said 30 25 to 30 people so if that's like kind of the highest you can go the lowest you can go is doing nothing i think you can get 80 percent there just by doing the things that you already know are healthy like uh, you know not overeating uh cutting out um processed food so having a good diet basically and uh, exercising those two things alone are probably will get you 80 percent there um, he, a lot of what he does is skincare as well. <laughs> Actually, I, I've started to kind of take care of my skin uh, a bit more since then. I've, I've actually seen an improvement. So I think that's an yeah, awesome glowing wonder. Glowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet. Um, <laughs> that's an underrated element of, uh, of like just helping you feel good about yourself. I think that guys don't follow. But anyway, uh, yeah, getting 80% there is just about diet exercise. And then if you want to go maybe the extra mile doing the regular checkups, the checkups that I do are checkups that you won't really do with your like regular GP checkups. So that would include an extensive cardiac lipid panel, like an extensive metabolic panel, VO2 max, a DEXA scan to look for uh, uh, different body composition um, metrics and a, a few other tests. So maybe add on to that um, pheno age test which is a, a biological age test that is based on uh, clinical markers rather than epigenetic uh, uh, markers um, and a few other tests that I think are kind of uh, interesting you could do these within a budget of um, a few hundred pounds a month with doctor consultations and everything and that would get you maybe 99% there is there anything in his regime which you think is totally crazy or maybe just not very evidence-based is there anything that's st struck out for you so one thing not just about his regime i'm not really a big ag advocate of doing whole body mri scans i think it looks cool and people feel like it, it's uh, it's helpful but it's probably less helpful than helpful doing whole body mri scans for to screen for uh, cancer and stuff like that and the evidence actually supports that you'll probably uh, a lot of what people don't appreciate is the more you know, the more uh, false positives you're going to find. We we don't even know what a lot of go, what goes on in the body actually means. So a lot of a lot of the time we find we find findings that uh, we start investigating and uh, that end up being my, maybe just normal variations. And that's the problem with these kind of extensive health checks. So you need to go into it with that in mind. There's the really interesting, I linked it in our notes, but the Cochrane review, which is like the 
granddaddy of evidence. It's like the, 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 the evidence that summarizes all of the available evidence. And really interestingly, I mean, relating to your point on imaging, but also relating on these kind of general health checks, it found that general health checks in people, so kind of bringing them in for a health MOT, checking basic weight, blood pressure, potentially doing a few bloods and maybe some imaging, but probably not. They don't really have any evidence to support that they reduce mortality, which is really, really surprising, I think, because you'd think that if you bring a 56 year old off the street and you do a general MOT on them, surely you're going to find something, you're going to find some abnormal blood, maybe you could start them on some management for that and ex extend their life. But there's actually no evidence for that, which I thought was really, really crazy uh, because there's a lot of startups in the space that their whole philosophy is essentially like, yo, like medicine is crap. It's <laughs> where, like all these doctors, like they don't really care about you or they're working, they've not got enough resources and we're going to give you this thing and that's going to improve your health. But like, I think fundamentally there's, it's not really evidence-based. Okay, um, I get that, but I think it's more like what they what they measured in this study is kind of um, measuring offering people tests rather than like them actually getting tests. And because we know that screening tests work, right, for certain things, we know that catching uh, early uh, people with high risk of heart disease early on and treating them works. But does maybe offering like a general health check to everyone every year? Uh, work maybe not just because a lot of people won't do them won't go through the checks so you think because this study was maybe too unfocused or what's, what's your yeah point? i think it's more like um you know for a general population if we offered everyone a general health check every year um how many of those people will actually go through the check so i still believe in general health checks i think the more advanced they get the better they will be but you go into them uh, knowing that there's a possibility of false positives if you're the type that wants to know more and you're fine with kind of living with that ambiguity but in, until you know um then i i support it but for uh, many people it might not be the right approach